Welcome traders to another Ticknell Earnings Report preview with me, Patrick Nunley. Before we jump into today's report, it's important we adhere to the risk disclaimer. The material provided is for information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. Views, information or opinions expressed by me in this recording are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. Okay, let's jump into today's report and we are looking at Amazon. Amazon is set to announce earnings after the New York close this evening. Uh, consensus is looking for earnings per share print of $9.22 on revenue of $116.32 billion. There's a whisper number on the street that the earnings per share could come in as high as $9.76. In terms of what to look for in the report, uh, the key metric really is revenue generated by Amazon Web Services, Amazon's cloud computing platform. The AWS segment provides global compute, storage, database, and other services to startup, enterprises, governments, and their agencies and academic institutions. AWS represented only 10.1% of Amazon's total revenue for the fourth quarter of 2020. Still, because it has significantly higher profit margins than the company's e-commerce business, AWS accounted for 51.9% of the company's operating income during that period. Amazon faces stiff competition from Microsoft, Azure, and Alphabet's uh, Google Cloud platform. Although the shift towards a work from home economy has uh, continued to stimulate demand for cloud service products. AWS revenue has seen healthy growth in recent years, but it has decelerated in the past several quarters. Uh, fiscal year 2018, for example, AWS revenue grew by roughly 45% and 49% year over year each quarter. Growth slowed in the mid 30s in fiscal year 2019 and into the high 20s for fiscal year 2020. It has hovered between 28% and 29% for the past three quarters in uh, the first in fiscal year 2021. Analysts expect that trend to continue with AWS revenue rising to 28.7% year over year. Let's take a look at some of the statistical trading patterns around the Amazon earnings release. The stock has moved lower in the immediate aftermath of earnings, eight out of 12 previous reports. However, on average, the stock is only down 0% for the first day of trading after the earnings release. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, Amazon is more likely to trade lower one day after earnings for an average loss of 0.5%. Uh, stock has moved higher one week after earnings, 8 out of 12 previous reports. On average, the stock moved up 0.8%. In terms of volatility, what the options Pricing is giving us, uh, we're looking for about 7.4% uh, move on the earnings. Stock has averaged a 5.1% move in recent quarters. From a flow and sentiment perspective, there was some notable buying. 5,685 contracts of the 3,150 call expiring June 17th this year. Options order flow in general, the sentiment is bearish. Investor sentiment going into the company's earnings release has 60% expecting earnings big. Consensus estimates are for earnings to decline year over year by 41.6%, with revenue increasing by 7.19%. Short interest has increased by 4.6% since the company's last earnings release, while the stock has drifted lower by 7.2% from its open following the earnings release to be 12.1% below its 200-day moving average, of $3,284. So let's take a look at the technical setup and see where uh, we might have some trading opportunity. So the technical setup uh, is a corrective pattern in, is in play at the moment. So versus the swing high here of $3,415, we are now looking for an equality objective test at $2,330. See a nice five wave sequence developing here. So any pop, uh, or any potential pop from earnings, uh, I've been looking for a drift lower, and the area where I'm really looking to uh, get involved is watching how price responds at this two, uh, $2,330 area. If we get nice bullish reversal patterns there, then I'm looking to engage on the long side, and the initial upside objective is going to be back into trend channel resistance, $3,150 on the upside. At this stage, any closing breach of the 2330 area would be a bearish development, and the next downside objective will be coming in at 
four, and that's, you can see here on the weekly chart, prior to the breakout area, just below 2,000 there. So, watching 2,330 for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a trend channel test. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.